So? So? They're girly magazines. They're not girly magazines. They're pornographic magazines. Oh, don't be soppy, love. They can be bought at any corner news agent. How can they be pornographic? Would you buy them? No. I'm a bit long in the tooth for that now. But I would if I was Steve's age. Dad! Look, love, he's 16. Of course he's interested in sex. He's uh, just naturally curious. There's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? I mean, never mind the pictures. They're degrading enough, debasing women. What, what about the explicit, if not to say obscene, stories? And the ads for, for things? You're overreacting, love. He's only a child. Yeah, like you are to me. Oh, come on, Dad. So what are you saying, that I shouldn't even speak to him about these? No. Wouldn't serve no purpose. Now, come on, love. You don't get that number of days off to get this place cleaned up. Oh, I should uh, put them back where you found me, if I was you. Go, isn't it? What do you think about porn, Jay? Not a lot. Does that mean you're indifferent to it or opposed to it? Well, it's a bit of both, I suppose. I used to be insecure, now I'm not so sure. Hey? Oh, yeah. God. My mouth tastes like the bottom of a parrot's cage. Interesting diet you must have. <sighs> so, what's your stance? Wobbly. Men. All the same, in or out of uniform. Yeah, particularly out. Is it something you're working on? Sort of. Code name Steve. <laughs> Tidied your room up yesterday, I hadn't you noticed? Hmm? Oh, yeah, Tom. You're very untidy. Steve? Sorry, what was that? I said you're very untidy. I don't mind. I like it like that. And I know where to find things, which is more than I can do when you've had one of your purges. I'm talking about finding things. I found some very interesting magazines in one of your drawers. Oh. Oh? Is that all you've got to say? I didn't know you searched my room. I thought it was criminals you saved that kind I of thing for. I was not searching your room. I was cleaning and tidying it up. Well, I didn't exactly leave them in full view, did I? Does that mean you feel ashamed enough to have the grace to hide them away? Oh, Mum, leave off. You know, a cunning villain would have said it was research material for an essay he was doing on the increase of pornography in our modern society. Yeah, well, I'm not a cunning villain, am I? Nor are you taking A-levels in gynaecology. Just girly, Max, Mum. No big deal. Where'd you get them? Steve, you do not get pocket money to spend on that rubbish. Oh, I didn't buy them. I mean, make your school lent them to me. Oh, yes, who was that? Look, they can be bought in any news agents. So what's it matter who it was? Excuse me, I've got a lot of homework to get through. So you blew it. Don't you think we all become less an objective when it comes to our own kids? I'd like behaving like a copper with my own child. That's what really bothers me. Well, don't let it. I do it all the time. Switching off from the job just isn't that easy. Can we have some coffee, love? Have this problem with your eldest, Clive? Is it a problem? Well, I think it's something we can just ignore. Well, why not? Well, come on, they all go through it at his age. I used to hide Hank Jansen books and my mum read them by torchlight under the bedclothes. Hank Jansen is Enid Blyton compared to the stuff they can get hold of these days. Ah, you read him too, did you? No, I did not. <laughs> we had more style. It was a giggle behind the girls' cloakroom over the naughty bits in Lady Chatley's Lover. <laughs> well, there you go. Come on. At least that was good literature. You call it what you like. It all comes down to the same thing in the end, doesn't it? A natural, youthful enthusiasm to discover what it's all about. Well, these magazines are a distortion of what it's all about. I mean, things like love, affection, respect don't even get a mention. Well, nor do they in biology lessons in the classroom. Ah, Bob, pop didn't see you. Let's have a word in my old. We'll leave you to it. And don't worry, it's called growing up.
What was all that about then, Gav? Just a stick. Forbes being a mother. DPP have been on to me about this Well Street blag. Then I'm still sure we've got enough to get them weighed off. And who's handling it? Fennec. Mm. Yeah, I know, he tends to be a bit overcautious at times. I've been going through the papers, I think he's got a point. Yeah, well, I know the forensic isn't too clever, but we got a couple of positive IDs. From a couple of young wallies barely out of training school. Now, you know who the solicitor is representing this little firm? That bent bastard Jones. Bent or not, the sort of readies he'll be getting. Yeah, which will be a fair part of the proceeds of the robbery. From which we have failed to recover any money at all as yet. Thing is, Bob, this is precisely the sort of case he likes to win. It's good for future business. He'll brief a top silk who'll be only too keen himself because of the undeclared part of the outrageous field cop, while our two innocents be made to look like liars and morons in the box. Yeah, well, what else can we do? This uh, grass of yours who stuck him up, what sort of license you get? A petty, nothing heavy. Any chance of leaning on him a bit to give evidence? He won't want to put himself on offer like that, Gov. Be handy, won't it? Hmm. I'll see how he shapes up. Two shops in Oxford Street already screaming on the trumpet. Looks like it might be them. Right. Jake? Come on, Starsky. Excuse me, ladies, may I ask what it is you're doing? Why? Who are you? I'm the proprietor of this establishment. Is something wrong? You're deaf? You can't hear the alarm? Of course. Well, what's that to do with us? You have removed a garment from my shop without paying. We just brought it out to have a better look at it in the night. Yes, I understand, ladies, of course, but uh, please. Uh... Oh, that's better. See, this tag is electronic. It sets off the alarm. It gets removed. Once you've purchased the garment, of course. I hope you're not implying we were trying to steal it. You? Never. But such things happen, believe me. Trusting soul, isn't he? <laughs> if I trusted to trust, I'd be uh, bankrupt. But please, ladies, no offence. I don't want to embarrass good customers. That's very kind of you. I hope we haven't been too much trouble. Those descriptions we've got, it'll be like looking for the proverbial needle. Let's go and have a word with the owner of that last shop they radioed in. I don't understand it. Magic eye, they call it. To me, it's a tragic eye. Have you any idea how much a security device like that costs, Inspector? Quite a few quid, I expect. A few quid? <laughs> Master of understatement, you have here. You're insured, aren't you? Insured? I have five shops. You should have my premiums for your salary. Do you have these on all the garments in the shop, sir? Everything of any size. On the jackets that were taken? Naturally. Any chance of a few dud ones being attached? They're guaranteed. So was the Titanic. What? Where the hell have you been? For a coffee and something to eat. Got to have some nourishment tonight. Well, come on then, let's get loaded up. Have it go then, all right. Got a nice leather jacket. Billy, we don't pay you to keep us hanging around with a load of hoisted gear. All right, love, don't keep on about it. I'm here now, aren't I? Anything else? Sue's loaded up with some nice cashmere. I've also got this blister. It's killing me. So? Go to the chemist and ice some plasters, love. Terrific, isn't he? <laughs> well, he's got this problem. Terminal greed. <laughs> Come on. on. But half a dozen expensive jackets, surely I would have seen them. Not if they had them concealed in some way. One of the assistants recalls seeing a bird with a plastic dustbin. Which one? Well, I don't know. He's seen one plastic dustbin. He's seen them all. Sorry. Keys are in the red. He's a detective? It's a changing world, sir. Today, the policeman is expected to be simpatico with the lifestyle of minority groups.
Not a bad day's work, ladies. I don't suppose we could have... Oh, no. Definitely not. Well, that's still early enough. Don't be stupid, Billy. We've hammered it enough for today. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I'll pick you up round your place tomorrow morning, same as usual. I suppose so. And don't forget our money. Do I ever? OK, where then? Where? Well, can't be too careful, can I? Some faces might think I'm talking the old Bill. Bad for the image. Know what I mean? I don't think what you're suggesting makes a lot of sense, Bob. What? I mean, what you're asking... Well, it ain't reasonable, is it? There's no a reasonable game we're in, Charlie. No. Look, if I put my face on offer in court and own up to being a grass, well, it's goodbye, Charlie, isn't it? I mean, this firm ain't a bunch of cowboys. They know a lot of very heavy people. I could... I would end up with no kneecaps. Well, you'd get protection. Yeah, but for how long? As long as it takes. Wouldn't be long enough. You could arrange a change of identity, going away money. Ah, oh, leave off! I've got a family! I don't want to live nowhere else. This is where I get my living, isn't it? Only as long as I look after you. Yeah, well... I just have to take my chances then, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh, I'm not getting through to you, Charlie. I'm trying to do this the nice way. You understand? Oh, that's nice. That's charming. I do you a favour, and you want to fit me up. No fit-ups. I've got enough on you to put you away for a long time. Think about it, huh? I'll be in touch. Three of them. As far as we can tell, my guess is they also have a minder on the firm. Descriptions are a bit vague. Cook and his assistant are coming in tomorrow to help with the photo fit. Let's call it a day, see what tomorrow brings. Yeah. Right. Hello, love. All right? Oh, Steve, did you put a light under the casserole when you came home? Mm -hmm. Good boy. I'm going upstairs to change. Don't be long with that call I've got to make. Sorry about that, Phil. It's me mother. Steve, did Granddad go up to Nine Elms? Yeah. What was that again, Phil? You heard me. Blue films. You mean porno movies? But, Phil, how'd you get hold of them? Well, you know, my dad's always going away on business trips. Well, he left the key to his study drawer behind. I found them in there. They're, uh, on video, actually. Won't he know? Well, no. How could he? Don't suppose he'd bother him much anyway. My old lady does a hairdressing and beauty parlour a bit tomorrow afternoon. I phoned Freddy. He's going to have some. Oh, I don't know, Phil. I don't think I'd better. I've really got to study and get these O-levels together. I'm way behind as it is. So what difference will a couple of hours make? No, I'd better not. <laughs> What's the matter? Scare that old lady of yours will nick you. <laughs> oh, turn it in, Phil. OK, OK. It's your loss, though, mate. I'll see you at the conditioning plant tomorrow. OK. See you. Morning, Jimmy. Morning. Every night. Oh, she showed them. Yeah. Well, how'd you get on? Oh, the conventional way. Yeah. Well, when you've had a little more experience. D.I. Forbes in here. I ain't seen her, Dove. What time are these two shoplifting witnesses supposed to be? Any time now. Right, I'm off then. Right, Mum. See you later. You straight home from school today? Yeah, I expect so. Well, I shouldn't be too late. Right. Take care. Oh, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Peter? Hmm. The mouth isn't quite right. Lacks a certain, uh, je ne sais quoi, if you see what I mean. Do I ever. But he's a good salesperson, you understand? Uh, Mr. Lake, uh, are you any good at drawing? Well, I was rather good at school, but I didn't pursue it. Unless one is very good, it's far too fraught with poverty. Good grief. Pardon? 
Good God. Look, do you think you could sketch the outline of a mouth so the officer's got something to work from? Well, for you, I'll certainly try. Boner, Doc. Boner. I'm beginning to wonder about you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about this, sir. It shouldn't take too long, now. Will I get my garments back from these thieving slags? Is that in your mirror again, the back? Yeah, I think it's very good. Yeah, I suppose so. Especially as you're carrying an extra passenger. What do you think? I don't know if these things really help. I mean, they never look much like the prospects when we eventually pull them, do they? Well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't tell anybody if you did. So what do you want us to run off a couple of dozen copies of these and trot them around the likely shops? Yes, you'd better. Any joy with that prospect of yours? Uh, hang on. Yeah, I had a word in his ear. And? I think he got the message. You think? Why you come around? Be better. There you go. Made up special last night. That's what I like about you, Billy. Your dedication. I aim to please. Yeah, well, please me by staying close today. Yeah, terrific. Uh, those copies will be better now. Right. Well, we're going out on Oba, then? Yeah. Uh, hope you don't mind me mentioning this, Maggie. But I couldn't help noticing. Well, it's just that I was wondering. Something was bothering you. I mean, if there's anything I can do. Remember that case I said I was working on? Codename Steve. <laughs> Well, what do you want to do about it? I don't know. That's the problem. Well, I suppose you could ignore it. I mean, it's not exactly the great train robbery, is it? Jake, we're talking here of young schoolboys being exposed to hardcore. Now, I personally believe that that is not something to be laid back about. OK, point taken. But they are 16. These days, that's like being 20 when I was their age. The way things are now, it's almost impossible for them not to be exposed to porn. Look, I did a stint in Vice. I know. The whole 59 obscene publications, that is a shambles. You've only got a slip round so to see that. It's near mission impossible to get the people who distribute that stuff convicted. And never mind the contradictory court rulings on law relating to obscenity and public indifference. It's the public that's buying the stuff. 50% of any given jury probably like porn. That's ridiculous. You think so? Look, I'm not supporting the case for porn. Really? Though I do happen to think its corruptive qualities are vastly overrated by some. Oh, come on. We are paid to uphold the law. But do you really believe that, say, every copper in vice is morally outraged every time he has to watch a dirty movie in a course of duty? Son and borrow films from confiscated stock to their own stag shows. And don't tell me you've been in the job this long and you don't know that. Grown men. Prone to the same weaknesses as the rest of us. And people don't like being told what they can or can't read and see. It's the same with dope. You ain't going to stop people smoking grass because the law disapproves. Especially when half the bloody establishment isn't a rolling a joint or two for themselves. It's a very jaded view. Yeah, well, that's the nature of this job, isn't it? Overexposure to the nasty side of life quickly teaches you to adopt a healthy cynicism. Another form of corruption. If you like. No, I don't like. OK. I'm on your side. Believe me. But you asked for my advice, and I've given it. You haven't given me advice. You've given me a lecture on why we shouldn't bother about certain aspects of law enforcement. Not the way it was That's meant. That's not to say that your argument hasn't some sort of force, which I am discovering. Yeah. And I'm willing to bet you won't find anything in there that makes it positively illegal for people to watch blue movies in the privacy of their own home. Nothing enforceable, anyway. Not even if they're children? Not even if they're young men with growing appetites and a natural curiosity. You can hardly go around to this boy's house and nick them, can you? How are you going to square that with Steve? They're his mates. Could cause some embarrassment. Like I said, it's a problem. It's your decision. Which you have hardly helped make any easier. Well, I have to admit, trying to capture a firmer hoisters is simpler. See what we can do.
Look at this lot. And the country's supposed to be on its knees. It is. Giving thanks to Mammon. Who? Oh, never mind, dummy. Just look. This is a bloody waste of time. I agree. There's no calls coming through from indignant shopkeepers. Maybe they're not working the street today. Maybe. Who give us switchboard? I've given him a bell. No answer. It's a message for D.I. Forbes, dear. OK, thank you, Charlie. Delta four and out. Sounds like it could be them. Well, what was that about one of them being pregnant? I don't know. Cook and his assistant didn't mention that. Nor any of the other shopkeepers either come to that. I've been thinking. The amount of gear they've been hoisting, they must be unloading it somewhere and coming back for seconds. I can only think of one way they can be doing that. Right. Let's try the one about Selfridges first. OK, girls, no problems. I'm just about loaded up. Me too. Right, let's dump what we got and get something to eat. I'm starving. <laughs> It's on us! Run! Run! Split up! Help! He's trying to rape me! Oh! I'll call a copper. <laughs> of you. This you've got to see. Well, shouldn't she be the one sitting down? Perhaps. Come on, Sue, take your dress off for the chief inspector. Steady on. Oh, it's okay, sir. Nothing to worry about. Come on. Well, I never. See? Great, isn't it? All she has to do is undo a couple of buttons and just drop the stuff in. Gone, gone, and never called her mother. Now you've all had your little bit of fun, do you mind if I take it off? Uncomfortable, is it? No. Just ridiculous in the circumstances. Yeah, by all means. Come on, give us a hand. So you don't fancy it, then? I didn't say that. It's just that I've got to get to the library for some books before it closes. And I've got all this homework. Oh, come on, Steve. It'll be giggle. No thanks all the same. Maybe some other time. What's the matter? You still worried about that old lady of yours? Oh, do leave off. I told you, if it wasn't for all this work... Yeah, yeah, OK. But, uh, it's a three-hour take. Yeah. I'll see you. Right. Come on, Sue. You've been nicked. Bang to rights. I mean, what possible explanation can you have for being in possession of all this stuff? No receipts. 
A very strange shopping bag. Not to mention the fact that we've got witnesses who will almost certainly identify you. So come on, please, let's have no more of this little Miss Innocent nonsense. I want a lawyer. I'm sure you do. God knows you need one. I know my rights. All professional thieves know their rights, Sue. Well, that's what you are, isn't it? A professional thief? Look. No ID. Now, what normal woman doesn't carry some form of identification in her bag? Which means you've probably got form, which means we've got a record, so even if you refuse to give us your full name and address, etc., once we've charged you, we'll take your pretty fingerprints, run them through the computer, and hey, presto. Well, you'd better get on and do it then, hadn't you? No, we will. But it would help you considerably in court if we could say that you've been helpful to us in our inquiries. Grass on my friends, you mean? What does a sweet little innocent like you know about the word grass? I read the papers and watch TV. And steal for a living. Your friend, Jenny. Oh, no, not that. Not what? Your friend next door has told all, so why should you take all the blame routine? That's what. Oh, with a seasoned fro like you, I wouldn't waste my time. Except you were about no, to. No, actually, I was about to say that your friend Jenny Burns. Yes. She gave us her name. Well, it's a good start, isn't it? I think I'll leave you to think about it. What about my lawyer? Just give his name to the officer here. Let's see what we can do about contacting him. Do I get anything to eat? Oh, yes. Lots of porridge. Cow. Well, that's an improvement on pig. Take a bit of a risk dropping the other one's name like that, won't you? Why? Calculated bluff. Yeah, well, I could be wrong. Should we found it on an old receipt and That's in right. Bag. You saw her face. Not that it matters, I just wanted to hurry things along. Once we traced the owner of the car, they left where no the mind and wasn't eventually the other girl. See if the renters have come up with anything on the car. Draw the curtains, Freddie. See the picture better. Doesn't mean he's changed his mind and gone round there. He said he'd be straight home from school. I know what you're thinking. But if I were you, I'd leave it out. It'd only cause a lot of aggravation. And down to what? No, I'm sorry, Jack. I can't just sit here and ignore it. I'm going round. Well, at least have a word with a governor. If he finds out... I can't do that either, can I? OK. But I think I'd better come with you. I'd appreciate that. Ten to one, Steve's changed his mind. You sure? And who else knows? Uh, Mrs. Forbes. Hello, Philip. Is Steve here? No. Uh, no, he's not here. He, he said he was going to the library when we left school. What about your parents? Are they in? No. My dad's away on business. Mum's at the hairdressers. This is Sergeant Barrett. You won't mind if we come in, will you? Oh, well. Um, Mrs. Forbes. Take the curtains. Do your parents know that you're watching this filth? No. Of course not. What do you think they'll say when I tell them? Not a lot, I shouldn't think. You speak for yourself. Mine will kill me. Do you think yours won't, do you? Well, the tape belongs to my father. Be a bit hypocritical of him to have a go at me, wouldn't it? And your mother? They'd probably watch it together. Do you know that you could be in a lot of trouble? Pornography is illegal. Well, you'd have to talk to my father about that. Please, Mrs. Forbes, don't tell my parents. My dad will go bananas. Now, don't whine, Freddie. There's nothing she can do. I don't like your attitude, Philip, but I don't understand it either. You're my son's friend. You've been a guest in my house on several occasions. Now, you show some respect or I'll show you what I can and can't do. At least Freddie here knows that what he's doing is wrong. <laughs> well, right or wrong, it's just a matter of geography, isn't it? Listen, you. 
You change your attitude fast and treat Mrs. Falls with respect, or you'll have me to deal with. Got it? Got it? Well, how do you expect me to be? I mean, you obviously knew about this. Your son, Steve, my so-called mate, grasped us, right? He most certainly did not. I happened to overhear you on the phone last night trying to persuade Steve to come round here today, and I wasn't eavesdropping either, so don't let me hear you blaming Steve. He is your friend. Oh, God knows, I'm beginning to wonder why. So what happens now? First, I confiscate this. I don't think you can do that, Mrs. Forbes. Not without... I've warrant. already done it. And secondly, I shall be speaking to both your parents. I told you, my father's way on business. Your mother, then. Please, Mrs. Forbes, don't tell my parents. Please. Well, in your case, Freddie, I may reconsider. But as you say that this tape belongs to your father, with apparently your mother's knowledge, I shall most definitely be speaking to her. I should tell her myself. Fine. I'd be very interested in her reaction. If she wants to contact me first, I shall be either at the station or at home. Oh, Chief. There's something I said. Well, take no notice. It's not down to you. No? Any developments while we've been out? Yeah, we've managed to trace the owner of the motor. It wasn't easy. The geezer he bought it off is still the registered owner. Our man hadn't bothered to re-register it after he bought it. Must have slipped his mind, I suppose. Well, that's why we had so much aggro locating it. Who, Jimmy? Who? Oh, yeah, sorry. Name's William Groves. Got form. Nothing heavy. Last known address, 16 Richmond Avenue, Islington. I was just wondering if our lady wanted us to slap round there and see if he's at home. Do you think he will be? No. Nah. Well, neither do I. Still, I'd better have a word with her. Right. How are the two we nick shaping up? Nothing. Just got them roasting down themselves. Well, the, uh, the one that was screaming for a brief. Well, we got in touch with the geezer she stuck up. He wanted another state of play, so I told him they were being charged, held overnight for the magistrates in the morning, or he'll apply for remand in custody. All right. Well, didn't he want to know the name of his client? Yeah, he asked. I told him she was keeping still on that. He didn't seem to mind. Yeah, he probably knows it's an old client, doesn't want to declare that he's had a chat to her. Yeah. We said he'd try and get in. If not, he'd see her at court in the morning. Terrific. That's the strength of her brief. We got it made. Our forensics have got plenty of prints, so they'll let us know. Right. How's it going? Pretty good so far. No problems, then. She didn't look too happy. Ah, I will. It's women, isn't it? Emotional. No, you're probably right. He'll realise the car will lead us to him, so he'll probably keep out of the way for a bit. Tonight, at least. Still. Perhaps you and Jimmy better go and have a look. He could be stupid enough. And Russell will want to know why we didn't if we don't. Well, that's not all he want to know. If you've made a rick over that. Then what did she say? Well, not a lot, really. Just that you could either phone her at the station or get her later at home. Well, I'll certainly speak to someone. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Shevington. Yes, of course. Yes, I do understand. Uh, leave it with me. I'll look into it and I'll get back to you, right? Goodbye. I want to work with you in my office now. So what the hell do you think you were doing? I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was doing my duty, both as an officer and a responsible parent. That's what I thought I was doing. Duty? You were in the middle of interrogating prisoners. You shoot off, commit an act which is at best a breach of discipline. And it was? You entered Mrs. Shevington's house without permission, without a warrant, and confiscated property. Property? A pornographic film? Property which you had no legal right to take, no legal right or status. Look, if an officer believes a criminal act has taken place, surely that's all the legal status we need to enter anywhere. Well, what do you think? We can just walk in anywhere on a whim, a fancy, a suspicion, or simply because of moral outrage? It's not entirely unknown of the force, sir. If this woman chooses to take legal action, believe me, that's what she's talking about, you could be in serious trouble. It could mean your suspension while we conduct an internal inquiry. This is an articulate, intelligent woman with radical views, feels very strongly about having her privacy invaded. What's more is prepared to do something about it. 
Look, sir, I know that the laws governing obscenity are a mess, but there is something. I, I'm not sure of the exact wording, but something about publishing obscene material to a third party. And this film is being transmitted on her television to a third party, an underage third party at that. Now, surely it's we who've got the case and not her. And considering your action in obtaining the evidence, how far do you think we'd succeed in getting that into a court of law? You've even involved a junior officer. You put him at risk as well as yourself. That's to say nothing of the reputation of this squad and the field day the Liberal Brigade will have screaming about police malpractice. If you don't mind me saying so, isn't that rather overstating it somewhat? I don't think it is. This is just the sort of petty incident that can get blown out of all proportion by the press because it's got that magic publicity ingredient sex. So what are you saying? That I... that we should just forget it? Well, I'm not saying that at all. We might not be allowed to forget it. Well, can't you see? You've put me in a very invidious position. Only two ways I can deal with it. I can wait for Mrs. Shervington to make an official written complaint and then follow procedure, almost certain to lead to your suspension, or, and this is strictly off the record, I can pretend this conversation hasn't taken place, give you an opportunity to return the tape, hope Mrs. Shervington will accept your apology. I can't apologise to him. My God, I'm the one who's morally in the right. The moral argument doesn't come but into it. Don't be so hypocritical. I'm trying to do you a favour. Maggie, come on, try. The Eycroft. Who? Yeah, hang on a minute. Yeah. That's no good wine. He's gone and got himself nicked. Oh, no. Well, that's all I need. Right, what for and when? Burglary, last night. They're holding him at Shepherd's Bush Nick. Burglary? Well, that's nice, isn't it? I thought you said a bit of petty. Well, the way he does it, it is. So what's happening? He's asking for me. Who's in charge of it? Uh, D.S. Green. All right, you shoot off. I'll give the governor over there a buzz. Perhaps we can sort something out. Best we can hope for is a bit of bail. Don't tell your man that we need it. Right, I'll put him on a promise. I didn't hear that. Could be hiding under the bed. No, I had a look. Mrs. Shervington. I'm Mrs. Forbes, Inspector Forbes, Steve's mother. Oh, yes. Do come in. Thank you. I've been expecting you. Please come through. Do sit down. Yeah. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thank you. It's a little early in the day for me. Yes, I suppose it would be. What did you mean when you said you'd been expecting me? Oh, did I say that? I simply meant I was expecting someone from the station. So, you're Steve's mother. We have met, actually. Oh, we have? Yes, at the school one evening. Yes, I remember now. Steve tells me he's studying hard for his O-levels. Yes. As is Philip. I do think education is so important. All kinds of education, wouldn't you agree? Let's not play games, Mrs. Shervington. You know why I'm here. Well, I'm not absolutely sure that I do. Is it as a mother or a policewoman? I'm both. All the time? Separating the two isn't easy. Oh, how dreary for you. I also play two roles, a wife and a mother, but I manage to accommodate the two quite comfortably. Look, Mrs. Shervington... Oh, come. I mean, our sons are such close friends. Surely we needn't be so formal. 
You're Margaret, or do you prefer Maggie? And please... I don't think the occasion calls for cosy informality. Oh, I see now that you do have difficulty separating your roles. Very well, Mrs. Forbes. What exactly is the occasion? You know perfectly well why I'm here. Well, surely they haven't sent you to inquire about yourself. Why did you ring my boss and not me? Well, one hardly telephones the offender. When one is the offended, Mrs. Forbes... Don't you Mrs. think that you've offended your son's mind by allowing I him to I did not watch... allow. Condone, then. Not that. He took the tape from my husband's desk without permission from either of us. But then you'd know that, wouldn't you, after your accidental eavesdropping? Where's Philip now? Pictures. You certificate, I believe. <laughs> oh, come on. I mean, all this radiating moral indignation. Anyone would think those two young boys have been out granny bashing instead of peacefully watching something that comes quite naturally and probably dream about in all their waking hours anyway. Is that how you came by your sex education, Mrs. Shervington? No. I had to learn the repressed way. All those dreadful hang-ups for years. Well, I don't have any hang-ups. And I didn't have to watch perversions to get that way, either. Perversions? People enjoying sex together? And in case you haven't seen it, that's all you'll find on the tape, which you illegally confiscated from my it home. It is a pornographic film, Mrs. Shervington. No. A pornographic film is John Wayne dropping napalm on gooks, and you can see that in Cinemascope at your local cinema. Or the police clubbing to death an innocent protester. That's pornographic, Mrs. Forbes. My husband was a police officer and he was murdered. Shot to death by thugs oh, during so an armed sorry. robbery. A decent man simply doing his duty to protect the public. Is that pornographic? Most certainly. But you do take my point. No. No, I do not take your point. You know, in my job I see more than my fair share of the disgusting aspects of the human condition. So I'm not easily shocked. <laughs> I've met plenty like you, cosseted in their cosy, expensive, white Anglo-Saxon ghettos, having meaningful conversations over twee little dinner parties. So sophisticated and liberal-minded in their criticism of the system over the patty de foie gras. What can we do for the downtrodden worker during the main course? Deploring racism over the pudding when they'd rather drop dead than have a black family actually move in next door to them. I think and all be safe in the knowledge that the system, particularly the policing part of it, is, if nothing else, geared to protect your lifestyle and your privileges more than anyone else. And all of you smiling indulgently while the kids are upstairs smoking pot with their friends. Well, let's face it, darling, I mean, at least it doesn't give you cancer or destroy the liver. Don't now, you think you're... I've a met little... you in the morgue identifying the pitiful remains of your child dead from drugs while still in his teens. Weeping in bewilderment when I tell you we found your runaway daughter rotten with venereal disease because she's been on the game for the last year and making porno films because mummy thought it was cool to let children do their own thing. You know, you talk so glibly about freedom of choice. Freedom to say, see, hear what one likes. But God forbid that you should bear any of the responsibility for what that degree of freedom causes in human misery. Oh, no. That's the fault of the system, too, isn't it? <laughs> well, I... I think... The best thing you can do with the tape, Mrs. Force, is to keep it. <laughs> you can destroy it, if you like. Very boring, anyway. But it turns my husband on, and one must be grateful for that, if nothing else. If any of your colleagues come asking questions, I'll simply say, what tape? That's not why I'm here. Yes, I know. You just made that abundantly clear. I really appreciate that, Mr. Croft. I thought I was in Stuck there, my life. You're still in Stuck, Charlie. All you've got is a drop of.